I'm going to ask my five esteemed colleagues to join me here. Uh, let's start with Douglas Work. He is the CEO of Reg D Resources in the United States, who provides the legal framework in which, in order for you to do this, uh, which is uh, great to have him here on board from Colorado, right? All right. And Joseph McKinley, uh, CEO and founder of McKinley Orthopedics Innovations. I hope I got that correctly. <laughs> and uh, Peter Castle uh, from Healthy Soul. If you haven't seen him, he's got a booth here as well. Both of them do. And Mark Duro uh, from Curve Technologies. And I hope uh, you all know Manny. Right? I hope you do. <laughs> um, these are the five, uh, sorry, yes, well, actually four. I got to learn how to count. Four leading entrepreneurs that took on this journey, this bumpy journey, I'm, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it uh, because it is bumpy, because everybody wants it to go smooth, but it doesn't. And I've learned that doing this for as long as I have so far. So first, uh, let's start with just uh, some small introductions. I kind of told them your roles, but uh, let's start with you, Doug. Just intro. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Doug Ruark. I'm president of Regulation D Resources. Uh, we are a 23-year-old firm that specializes in securities offering preparation work, uh, and then we also build and deploy investor raise portals. Um, and so we cover really the gamut of exempt securities offerings. Obviously, the focus today is on Regulation A+. Uh, and so that, that's our firm. We're here to get uh, the offering prepared, the filing work done, uh, and then we also can bring uh, the raise portal build into play, which would deploy Core Connects uh, technology into the back end. Uh, so that's our firm, and uh, that's our role in this process. Joseph. Yeah, I'm uh, Joe McGinley. I'm founder and CEO of McGinley Orthopedics. Uh, my background's in mechanical engineering and, and as well as medicine. And what we created, Oscar was talking about stories, our entire company is built on stories. We actually literally have a napkin sketch uh, that was the basis of our technology that's being used in operating rooms around the world today. Uh, our company has two commercialized products, the IntelliSense handheld robotics, as well as uh, the lever action distal radius plates. Uh, we have several in the pipeline. We have over 125 issued and pending patents. And uh, most exciting about being up here on the panel uh, today is uh, we just launched our Reg A Plus round about uh, 48 hours ago. So it is live. You can scan the invest button. It's as easy as that. Uh, Oscar was not sugarcoating that. You can literally just put in your credit card and invest in, in any of our companies that are now live uh, with the Reg A Plus. Um, <clears throat> I'm Peter Castle. I am co-founder and CEO of Healthy Soul. We produced the first UVC-based device for disinfecting the soles of shoes. Um, we had found all kinds of evidence about the contributions that shoes and shoe soles make to the overall contamination within hospitals and controlled areas. And we had started well before uh, COVID even began. We just had the evidence and the personal experiences to know what can happen to people in terms of going into a hospital and potentially acquiring an infection that they didn't arrive with. Um, and we've now been open with the reggae for three weeks. It was really something that was very special to us. First um, is that I nor, nor my co-founder had any prior experience within the med tech space. So getting institutional investment was initially very difficult. And as well, our product has a very strong emotional aspect. Once we describe it to people, lots of people go home and they take their shoes off when they go home. And the idea that you'll go from patient to patient to patient in the same shoes and track every infection or every disease in which you've come into contact with from patient to patient, people understood it. So much so, you know, prior to learning about the Reg A, we'd tell somebody the story of our company and they'd say, I wish that was outside of where my mother was being treated. I wish this was in my kid's nursery. I wish I could have this for my home. And so when we learned about the Reg A, we understood we had a story that resonated with people and that this was really one of the best ways we could go out and get, get capital. Hello, my name is Mark Giroux. I'm the chairman and CEO of Curve Therapeutics. Uh, our, our company started um, fairly uh, organically because I started as the first patient. Uh, we were, I was just trying to find a solution to chronic sinusitis and the terrible allergies I suffered from, and I've had five sinus surgeries, and it always comes back. So I would just say, all right, we got to do a better job delivering drugs in the nasal cavity. Uh, once we were able to demonstrate we could do pretty much anywhere in the nasal cavity that we wanted, 
uh, the nose to brain people came calling because the idea that you could deliver drugs to the brain through the olfactory region uh, was novel, but nobody could actually get there to, to find out if it was possible uh, until we came along and we did it and uh, it grew from there. So we demonstrated we could do it with Alzheimer's early on and then everybody started calling and we ended up in 22 different human use clinical trials for a whole range of things. Now, Alzheimer's is our lowest hanging fruit. Uh, right now in the, in the course of this, uh, of this journey we're on right now, but the Regulation A Plus was a really attractive option for us because we have, we're moving into the phase of our company where everything we're gonna do is gonna be enormously expensive. And while we work well with institutions, there's more to do. And the great story about Reg A Plus is, you know, everybody gets to be part of the community. Um, if everybody here knows someone who has some neurodegenerative disease, whether it's uh, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or ALS, or what have you, um, and you get to have that opportunity to play, right? You get to be join the community, be part of the club. Um, you know, for a $600 investment, you can say, I contributed in a very credible way at getting us over the finish line. And we want everybody to, to, to know that they can play that part and, and play a role in, in our success. So we want to reach everybody. And Oscar's numbers of just the U.S. alone, um, you know, could put us over the top at, at any point if we, could, uh, if we could reach the people and tell them to click the Invest Now button. Hi, I'm uh, Manny Villafana, serial entrepreneur, I guess, uh, founder, chief executive officer for Medical 21. Uh, we're here uh, financing our company through the Reggae. We have developed a artificial coronary artery for bypass surgery, uh, working with Oscar and Scott uh, we were looking at a different way of financing our company because typically in the past uh, I've been able to do seven IPOs. Uh, however, in the technology that we have now, it has taken us uh, six years to develop and as a result, we still have no revenues, but we need money. Through the Reg A, we feel that we can accomplish our goals of reaching a financing goal of somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to $40 million. Uh, it's been a, a journey for us. Uh, we've been working with them. We've both been learning. And uh, I feel sincerely that uh, we will be able to accomplish and reach people like before that do want to participate in the development of what we feel is probably one of the most significant medical products ever. Having been involved with some of the major ones before, believe me when I tell you, this one is even better. Thank you. And, you know, it, it's, I'm not uh, a medical background at all, and I know all their technologies. Uh, interesting enough, Joseph, I don't know if you remember at the last event, you only had to show me the drill. I only had one question. How do they do it today? Um, so, uh, but before we get into the second part of the real discussion, is you are obviously hearing the, the element. It, it is a great regulation. It is bumpy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I keep saying that to you because you need to be in that type of uh, mindset that, you know, everything could be pre-planned, but, you know, not always it goes according to schedule. Uh, Doug, just walk us through really quickly all the requirements because, you know, you see it from the filing. So let's just walk through that, and then we're going to walk into the, the, the real part, the crowd, the discussion of, uh, of today's topic. But let's just give them that background first. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, and you touched upon it, I think uh, we're at a really interesting time right now in that you've had a number of things that have changed and it's really created a dynamic where companies can go out and successfully raise money. Uh, the first is the rule changes. Uh, you know, anything prior now to the JOBS Act really looks archaic as far as the capabilities go. I mean, when you, when you looked at what a private company had as far as options to go syndicate capital, it was essentially Regulation D. Uh, and that program didn't allow any kind of general solicitation of the public. And so what was interesting was, is as you saw social media start developing and the internet developing, and you had these uh, tools that would allow you to reach a tremendous number of people in a short period of time, 
uh, to not have those programs advancing was frustrating because uh, you know we had people continually saying, well, I can't put this raise up on my website or how, how can I go out to my customer base? And under the old rules and the old programs, you weren't allowed to do that. So uh, I think transformational is, is kind of the best word to describe it. I mean, it really is an entirely new dynamic now uh, with the ability to execute what amounts to a public offering of private securities. I mean, the investor acquisition capabilities of Reg A Plus uh, is going to mimic a public offering for these companies. And I think then um, the technology piece is another angle. Uh, the fact that you can go to one of these raise websites, uh, click the invest button, and in three minutes you're moving on with your day and you've just bought securities in a private company is, is amazing. And obviously kudos to you and your technology, Oscar, and leading the way there with your company. Um, so I, it, it really is a, an, an amazing time right now in the industry. With Reg A+, uh, you are allowed to raise up to $75 million in a 12-month period. Um, it, the filing work is, is very similar to an S1. So I think that's, as far as the preparation side goes, uh, you really have to be prepared to come in and you're going to be creating a filing that has a lot of granularity. Uh, this is not a Regulation D with a private placement memorandum where you've got some liberties on how much granularity you're providing. So you are going to be uh, coming through a process where it's going to be an S1 level filing. Uh, the exhibits are going to be similar there as well. Uh, you will need to come in with uh, and maintain audited financials, uh, and then uh, you're also required to obviously have a, uh, a transfer agent on board. And so ultimately with this, uh, the process is really uh, you know, getting the filing work done. You're obviously getting a raise portal built. You're getting all of your vendors in place, broker dealers, transfer agent. Um, and then, um, you know, once the offering is prepared for submittal of the SEC, it gets submitted. Uh, it goes through a qualification process. I think it's important to understand that that's not the SEC trying to determine if you're going to have a successful company. It's really the SEC looking at the filing and uh, making a decision as to whether or not the disclosures are in place, the exhibits are in order, uh, and then from there, uh, you'll uh, essentially have a qualification uh, where you're qualified, and at that point, the offering can go effective uh, and launch. And so it's, uh, it is interesting in that Regulation A has been around for a long time. So I, I get a lot of people that are like, where did this Reg A program come from? Well, it's actually been around for uh, a significant period of time, but it, it was also an archaic framework. And Tier 1 Reg A+, plus, there's two tiers under Reg A+, plus, Tier 1 and Tier 2. Pretty much everybody's using Tier 2, because when you get that offering qualified at the federal level, it's a federally covered security. You can sell it in all 50 states and internationally. Um, so I think when people look at where Reg A Plus come from, well, it had been there, but the rules were archaic, and so in 2015, when the rule changes happened, it really created a dynamic where you're essentially getting a public offering out of this program without having to go through a true public offering preparation process. Great overview. <laughs> Start to finish from the compliance side. So, but now we're going to talk to the entrepreneurs because they're live, and as Joe said, it right down to the wire, right before the event. So you know what this means? Uh, uh, this is really important. You can go to all their websites, and legally I can say this to you. This is really the important aspect of this exercise. These individuals are live, and I can specifically tell you, without being offside with any regulator, that you can go to their website, click the invest button, and invest. I mean, think about what I'm really saying. I'm not saying I'll send you a deck. I'm saying you can actually do that right now while you're listening to them. This is the transformation. And imagine the audience being five times or 100 times bigger than that. But right now, we're going to talk a little bit about that audience and the inclusion element. So let's start with you, Joe. I mean, this is, you're just starting. I mean, but you've been working at this for a while. And, it, and one of the things that I see with reggae is not just about targeting that audience, but it's also bringing everybody else on board giving that awareness. Tell me about that part of the component of your journey that you're going through. You know, Oscar, that's what we're most excited about is getting the message out to individuals and getting them to be part of our team. Um, not only are we raising funds, we're building team members. We're, we're building ambassadors to our brand. Uh, we're getting people out there to learn about our products that are available to, for use right now. They'll talk to their hospitals. They'll talk to their orthopedic surgeons. So there's multiple value points for us as a company. Uh, in the bigger picture, the concept of the Reg A Plus, it just makes sense. Uh, you hear a lot about uh, wealth disparity and individuals not having access to wealth. 
here it is. Um, you know, we, you essentially cut out the middleman, and the investor now has direct access to private securities. Uh, that that was unheard of even 10 years ago. Uh, you know, Doug, I know what you're talking about as far as Reg A plus, but I didn't know about it a year ago, and and I've done a Reg D round. Um, so you know, it is something new to individuals out there. Uh, but the exciting part about it is the access and getting uh, innumerable uh, individuals on your team marketing the security, marketing the company, and marketing the product. Perfect. And I, actually, Peter, you and I, we were discussing this earlier for lunch uh, a little bit, but I, so I'll put you on the spot of it because you're really going down to the numbers. You're kind of a techie like me. Little geeky there. We get. We all are. I know Joe is as well. We all are. Uh, <laughs> it's good to analyze your information. Steady. But you've been live now what? Sixteen weeks, right? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Sorry. And so this is where I said it. 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 it where we are painting a nice rosy picture. But the start isn't always the the way everybody anticipates. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But let's talk about your journey right now because you've been starting. So yeah. tell us how it's been going. Well, it's been, it's been exciting and encouraging and also, of course, bumpy. There is sort of the excitement on a daily basis of waking up and looking at the list of investors and understanding that a person I've never met, a person that I might not ever meet, pulled out their credit card and literally put down $10,000 in trusting our mission and trusting us, which is an unbelievably encouraging item to see on a daily basis. Even, you know, I've had phone conversations with folks, our minimum investment is $116. And I've had conversations with people on the phone because I'm, I'm, I'm hands-on, I go through the numbers, I talk to everybody I can, I, I much to the dismay of my family, re rarely stop. And uh, just having a conversation with somebody who was going to put in $116, was thrilled about the idea, was going to then go out and talk to people about it, was an, an amazing, you know, portion of that. There is also the concern of my job as a CEO, or a big portion of my job, is making sure that we have money. Money. I need money to do my job. We have a great product. We have great customers. In this modern landscape, you can't necessarily scale without money. And you know, one of the things that comes down to as well when we talk about investors is the research shows the companies with money are the companies that win. And having another option to have you know, institutional investors, smart money, so to speak, connect us with everybody. But what I keep thinking about, even though, you know, we had projections and we haven't yet reached them and we're moving towards that, is that I remember that in their own way, the person who put down $500, $1,000, $116, it's its own form of smart money. I mean, a woman told me that she goes to a church in Arizona of um, 10,000 parishioners and she was going to be sharing our information and asking, you know, kindly that people within the church share that information. And that's, you know, a certain level of smart money as well in which I then saw, literally, because I get all the information, a spike of investments from Arizona. And it's, it's just, we work, we work very much, especially during COVID, in a bubble. And to have this unbelievably encouraging and sort of, you know, motivating, driving factor that people believe in it. People believe in our mission. People believe in us as a team. It's, it's, it's incredibly valuable. It's, it, it, is, uh, it is a great journey, and you're right. When you start talking to them one by one, you start seeing the impact. And, uh, and we're going to get to the side where family office and VC comes in. I always save the best for last. No, and uh, just joking. Mark, I mean... It, Obviously not the best. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you know, there. look, I am, I'm a fan of entrepreneurship. I love entrepreneurs. And if I would have given up on the first bump in this whole ecosystem that got started 13 years ago, I would have been doing capital markets where I was at. Uh, but you know what? Perseverance. You got to keep going. This is a good thing. It really is. And in uh, and, and your company, you've been live now how many weeks? Four. Four weeks. So tell us about your journey so far and, and the experiences you're having. Well, um, if you take a look around this conference, we, the, Scott has done a tremendous job of setting these things up. He really knows what he's doing. But the thing about the team that is involved in all of this is Doug knows what he's doing. You know what you're doing. The whole team around all of this, Rialto Markets, our broker-dealer, has been terrific. So the whole process is great, right? It, so we, have, we feel really supported that we can get this through 
and, and succeed, uh, you know, ultimately. Um, but what we have learned over the last four weeks is so much turns on investor acquisition and that marketing and telling of the message. So when we're sitting here telling our story, you know, sell the story, well, you know, Kerr feels it has a really important story to tell. We think it's very interesting. So we have to really count on that marketing to have the people click the invest now button. And really, the, if, if the investor acquisition piece of that is successful, all the other pieces are already in place, right? You're there, Rialto's there, Doug is there, um, and, and uh, we rely on a lot of Scott's market research as well. So, um, you know, every piece is here. If the investor acquisition piece comes through the way we hope it will and we like the people we're working with, then this is a, this is a, this is a ball going out of the park. Uh, we're, we're really excited to be a part of it. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. It's the storytelling, I think, is the... Uh, I just did an interview yesterday, late last night, and they asked me, what is the most challenging thing to an entrepreneur? And I think the biggest challenge is telling a story. I know it, it, it sounds simple to say, but I think it's very difficult, especially if you're inside your company. You believe it to be very technical or this and that. And sometimes you need someone that knows nothing to come and look at it and then give you a perspective. Maybe that is the way to tell it. And so there are many different ways to tell a story, to get an audience. Because in this audience, you're reaching in a digital world. That means it's through the internet. Okay. So that's one type of audience. But using this regulation allows you something that is quite unique. And that is that the old way, you could only reach investors by knocking on the door on the ones you knew, or go to events like this. So can you do an event like this every month? Think about this for a moment. Write that down. Write down the cost, the hotel, the airfare, and all that. So now with online, you don't need to worry about it. You create it once, and then you just distribute it. And you're distributing it to everyone, not only those who could invest in your company, but also those who might be interested in your company as customers, ambassadors, potential partners, and now investors. So the Jobs Act was not to remove venture capital or private equity or family offices. It was quite the opposite. It was to include everyone. And today, as you probably saw the news, uh, Manny, uh, the news came out yesterday. I think it was yesterday, uh, with a successful uh, uh, you know, announcement of raising $20 million into his company uh, recently. Well, tell us a little bit about that and your journey as well in the Reg Aid world. I, I want to start with one thing. I, I'm, the, I'm a typical entrepreneur. I develop products, however, that are quite unique and uh, filled, filled with tremendous amount of risk. As I mentioned before, I have done seven IPOs, so raising capital. We've been quite successful in the past. But we came to this hurdle that maybe an IPO would not be available to us. When I began talking to Scott, he was telling me about the Reg A, and the first thing he said was that, you know, you'll be able to reach the accredited investor as well as the non-accredited investor. Now, if you're a, an entrepreneur thinking about going to a Reg A, the first question you're gonna say, hmm, Gee, I'm working on a product that's very high risk. I don't know if I want a non-accredited investor taking that type of risk. We're, we're reaching out to what I call the, the uh, Joe the bartender. And what I don't want to happen is that Joe the bartender decides to sell the bar, sell a couple of kids, the farm and everything, and putting it on one horse. Because we are a high risk situation. And Scott, inform me of the basics. He said, look, Manny, take a look at what you've done before. Okay, you started a little company called CPI, and if, uh, I suppose if, if, if Guinness's Book of Record held a, had a, a listing that said the fastest IPO ever, I may have won that race because I did my first IPO in 114 days after we opened up the doors of the company. We did a, a second IPO 
when we did St. Jude, and that was done within seven months of opening the door. And, and Scott reminded me, he says, I'll bet you, Manny, that when you did your St. Jude IPO, you probably did not have a valve in your hand. You probably had a few sketches on the table and stuff like that, an idea of how to make a valve. And I said, you're right. And he said, but yet when you do an IPO, you are inviting both the accredited and non-accredited investor. So let's take a look at you now, Manny. Right now, you have put somewhere in the neighborhood of six years into the development of a uh, artificial artery. It's working quite well. You're ready to go into humans. There is far, far less risk than what you were doing when you were developing a pacemaker, developing a heart valve. Furthermore, with the Reg A, you have another additional safety barrier particularly for the non-accredited investor, and that is that he or she has to be qualified. Joe, the bartender, cannot go and sell his bar and sell a couple of kids at a farm and everything and bet it all on you. We limit it, that is to say, the reggae limit, limitation is that a new investor can only invest a maximum of 10% of their annual income. That made me feel much, much more comfortable. Because in fact, we were, in the previous companies, always having some non-accredited investors investing without any control. You still maintain a control doing a reggae. Now, I was probably one of the first guys that went up to Scott and said, you know, this is great. The name of my company is Medical 21, which represents the 21st century. And we're going to do a financing now in the medical community that is truly a 21st century type of financing. We're going to reach out to the public, both accredited and non-accredited, to help participate in helping us finance this project, which is a project that will affect all of us. If there's 100 people in this room, I'm going to tell you that at least 50 of you will at one point or another be told that maybe we have to do bypass surgery on you. Or maybe on your legs you're going to need some new vessels implanted so that we get better circulation in those good old legs. Okay? And we can do it without harvesting vessels, doing it without scarring. I was talking to one individual today who lost his father. And he said the biggest problem was that when they harvested the vessels out of his legs, he lost total usage of his legs. He actually had a, a leg amputated and may, may have been able to, to be uh, not done if, he, if we never touched the legs. And so when we're harvesting vessels, we don't harvest vessels. We actually don't touch the legs. We don't touch the arms. We give the surgeon a vessel within 10 seconds by opening up a little package. We have had an experience now, we've been working on this, I, th I think we've been effective about four months. Uh, and we were told that the financing would take place similar to a hockey stick. It will start out slow and then grow. Uh, so far, the, the slow part has been slow, okay. They're living up to that. But I've seen such an increase in activity of the telling the story uh, across the, the social media, the, the sales and marketing of our story, that I feel very confident that we'll accomplish our goal. Now, because of this exposure, we recently, and with the help of, by the way, of Scott, uh, we've been able to reach uh, people that, one particular individual says, I'm gonna commit $20 million to us. Hey, hey, I can sleep a little bit better, okay? Just a little bit better? Huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, let me just say this, that, that working through a reggae is, an, is a totally new approach. Uh, I, who have done, like I said, seven IPOs before, have always been doing it a certain way, 
And this has been a challenging new way, a learning curve for me. Uh, I am really pleased with what is being done. And we will know the answer in probably two or three more months if this can be done. I'm confident that it will be done. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that is, you know, that's one thing about the regulation uh, that you have to look at is that, look, I had uh, just recently, it, it just happened again. And this, these are rarities. It, it does happen, but we did have a client that raised uh, $5 million in less than 24 hours. It does happen every once in a while. It, it's, it's one of those rarities, but sometimes it does take time, and there are different things you need to do. So we're going to talk a little bit uh, uh, now about nudging. So nudging is something that we need to understand it's happening every day. And because these companies are live, they can actually tell you how they're going to nudge you while you're going there in, in their site. See, I get the ability to do that. Everything I'm doing right now, I need you to understand, five, six years ago was completely illegal. Everything I've said so far, completely illegal. Actually, I would be arrested. But because it is fully compliant with the SEC, everything that these individuals are going to tell you is fully compliant. Nudging. What is nudging? Well, all of you have gone shopping online. You bought a plane ticket online. You will know what nudging is. So. Let's start with you, Joe. How are you nudging investors? Well, you know, we have access to data, so we can see individuals that are logging onto our website. Uh, we can see how they uh, navigate through that website, and you can assess their interests. The, the data really is key to, to nudging. Really, it's encouraging. It's trying to make that individual comfortable with your product, comfortable with your story, and comfortable with that investment. Um, because for someone, for the first time, they're clicking on this, and, and right away, they click on the invest button. You want a social security number and a credit card. <laughs> it raises red flags. Uh, so that individual might be a little bit timid about putting that information in. So they'll click on that, but we'll see. We saw that that occurred. Um, so then we'll have someone reach out either from Rialto or one of our other partners, uh, uh, Forward Progress with Marketing, and they'll contact that individual. They'll say, hey, you know, I saw you filled out the first page of the application, but you didn't really complete it. What, what's, the, what's the problem? Um, and they'll speak to that person and say, uh, this is what's really happening. This is a registered security. All this information is totally secure. It's like you're buying stocks anywhere else. Um, and that person then will become more comfortable with the process. So depending on the amount of the investment or how much they're considering, it'll, it'll trigger different flags. And then we can help assist that person become comfortable with the, with the transaction and then become a member of our team. So Peter, mm. we were talking about it during lunch. So what are you doing to nudge an investor right now? Well, we have been doing all kinds of outreach as well. I mean, that, that's sort of part of it, right, is, is like a lot of online, you know, we have to think about these shares almost as e-commerce. And so, you know, a lot of times it'll take touching, in, you know, the, the consumer multiple times to do so. So one of the things that we've actually been doing is using um, ringless voicemails. So essentially, I can leave a personal message to these investors in their voicemail inbox without disrupting their day. So they get a phone call from me, and they get an email from me. I'm willing to answer the questions. Obviously, as this scales, and Manny says the hockey stick effect kicks in, there's going to be a limit to how much I'm going to be able to do my job and also interface with people. But early on, these are the folks who truly believe in our mission. These are the biggest believers. These are the people who are really out on the edge supporting us. And as people said, they're our future customers. What we're offering people and what I tell them is, there's sort of this concept of vote with your dollar as a consumer. Well, now you can vote with your dollar as an investor, as somebody who will reap the rewards. Every one of us will enter the medical system. How do we want that to look? What care do we want to have? What do we want our doctor to be doing when providing us care? And we are offering people that opportunity. And when I say to them, what do you want your outcomes to be? What do you want the outcomes of your family to be? When I actually speak with people, it puts them over the edge. And this is where our story, which is also going to be necessary for the end customer, right? For anybody who's going to eventually be adopting for even compliance use of our product. And so we get that opportunity that, again, rarely a CEO gets in this position, which is to speak to the people that will be actually touched by our technology. 
And what it ends up doing is it provides us this opportunity, I think, of raising money as a dump truck. We're going to be looking for the boulders. People here are the boulders. But what the reggae does is it allows us to fill the negative space of the truck with sand. And everybody there has a common goal of getting to the same place together. And the more money you have, the more secure your investment is, the better the company does, the greater the chances of success. That has been proven out through economics time and time again. And so it just makes total sense for everybody to get in on the boat together. Perfect. Mark, I mean, I know you've only been started uh, with Dawson just recently, so uh, have you started any nudging yet? or We really haven't, but we've had the discussions. And there's um, one of the unique things about how my company works is <clears throat> a lot of times we're more in touch with the patient than the actual doctors are. So we have a lot of patients on a compassionate use basis who are Alzheimer's patients and Parkinson's patients, but they ask me a lot of the questions. I know there's a lot of them I cannot answer, and we have to take them back to the neurologist, but we get to interface with a lot of these people and, and mostly a lot of their caregivers. And we wanna, we're, we're actually talking about how are we going to do the outreach to a lot of these people. Curve was built on a grassroots sort of effort, and we want to be able to, to reach out to those people. You know, there's a lot of opportunities here to make intelligent investments in, uh, in companies like Curve, uh, where, you know, hey, for Christmas, I'm giving you 100 shares of Curve Therapeutics or 100 shares of Healthy Soul, right? So, or for your birthday, it's, it's a gift that isn't just... You know. Well, it's actually, it's for, thank you for starting it, because the other two missed it. Now, <laughs> you know, so one of Winner. the greatest things of reggae, because I'm going to let you both touch on your, each other's companies, because thank you, Mark. That was, that was a great, great point there. Reggae allows you to do something extremely wonderful, fully compliant again. I can incentivize you to invest more money in my company by giving you something. So I've had companies give away beer, vodka. In fact, uh, my number one client in the world is BrewDog out of the UK. It would give people beer if they invested more. Um, and obviously, you're not going to give away your products. You could, <laughs> but you could nudge them with more shares. So why is this important? So, you know, when people hear me say, Oscar, you're just, you know, you're just giving away stuff. You're not. You're doing what every other vendor in the world is doing to the consumer, is training people. And I created a video, it, I did it for them, and I never published it, but it, it was really me booking a flight to London. And when I did that, I went to my airline company, I clicked on the button, it gave me three choices. I picked the lowest choice. And I clicked on that, and I thought I was done. No, I wasn't. The airline then gave me five more choices to take that same lower seat to keep increasing the rate, but along the way, it kept nudging me. I'll give you more points. I'll give you free luggage. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. And along the way, that's exactly what I did because I saw the value and what I was getting. So what's happening today is investors, people, human beings, whether educated, not accredited, not accredited, doesn't matter. We've seen investors with $150,000 putting it on their credit card. People go, that's insane. No, it's not. It's a free ticket for his family for Christmas. Think about it. Points. So everybody's got a different motivation, but this is something all of you can offer, right? So Joey, you're doing how many tiers? Five tiers? Yeah, five or six tiers plus early share, early bonuses. As early well. bonuses. Yeah. And we're doing early shares as well. Early yeah. shares. And that comes to an end when? Um, that comes to an end actually on the 24th at 11.59 p.m. Uh, PST? <laughs> PST. <laughs> PST. <laughs> Everybody make a note. <laughs> PST. See? It's a time-sensitive component. See, again, fully compliant. And, and Mark, you haven't started yours yet, right? No. So each company has the ability to do that and... Does this mean that it's any less or any, uh, you know, of a company because they're doing that? No. They are following the mainstream. No different than every store offers you either a free bag, more points, or anything like that. Do you think any less of their brand? Absolutely not. You expect it. Think about us. Think about each of one of you here today. You have this expectation. You want a dollar, but you want a dollar more. You don't want a dollar anymore. 
It's just we're now being trained, and it's happening even to investing. And this is where companies like you're hearing today have that advantage to do. So, look, we've gone over by a lot of time. time but, yeah. you know, okay. Scott said it was okay, right? <laughs> so he said it's okay. Look at that. So, Yes. You got to be careful what you tell Scott. Okay. <laughs> All right. You tell him something good. You're going to have to say it again ten times. Anyway, all kidding aside. Thank you, Scott, for that question. First of all, if you did put in, let's say, sixteen thousand five hundred dollars when I started St. Jude, which was at the time the minimum investment, it'd be worth around between ninety and ninety-five million. No. Correction, be worth $92 million today, okay? Uh, the other comparison was that we all know Tesla. I bet you everyone in this conference knows Tesla. If you took a million dollars on the IPO of Tesla and you put a million dollars on it, today it'd be worth between 250 and $300 million. Not a bad number. You'd take it all day long, right? Well, someone was looking at some documents uh, that we have on St. Jude. And it's been published and everything, so I'm not telling you out of my memory. This, these are actual published numbers. And basically it said that if you took, um, you know, using those numbers, if you took a, a million dollars when we started St. Jude and you held it for the same amount of time that you've been holding your Tesla, okay, it would be worth between... Um, billion and a half and two billion dollars. And this is the part that people don't understand. They know about batteries for cars and new of this and AI and all these kinds of things. But medical technology, particularly in the area of implantology, where we develop products to be implanted in the body, has had a very successful rate of return. I don't know how you can tell that story. Yes, I've lived through several of those examples, but how do you tell the story? And, and that's what basically Scott is trying to say. If we can get medical technology to be understood, like everyone understands an electric car and stuff like that. And in the case of Medical 21, we are dealing with what will probably be the single biggest implanted device ever. The other day, I went to my guys and I said, hey, guys, when we, can we build 1,000 graphs per day? And they're kind of looking at me, so, so why do you want to know that? The reason I want to know that is, is that 1,000 graphs per day is only 10% of the market. And if you think about that, that's $5 million a day in sales, Okay. If you want to multiply that by 300 days, you're already talking for 10% for of the market over a billion and a half dollars. Wow. That's what I'm doing these days. Well, anyway, thank you, Scott, for putting this together. Oscar, as always. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, the only thing I'll leave you with is uh, if you guys want to watch a video by Elon in... I know you brought up the examples of a million dollars, but I'm more down to everyone else. Elon's example is, how do you put in $1,000 in my company? Prior to it going public, it would have been worth $250,000. That's the reality. And to answer your other question, which is really interesting, how do we get that to everybody? Well, the interesting thing is, money didn't want it to get it to everybody. So we keep thinking people do not understand science. Really? There's a pharmacy store in every bloody corner. I mean, there are drugs there that I don't have a clue, but I just know one's for my headache, one's for my back pain. I don't need to know anything more than that. I think it's time that you realize that the consumer to your products are ready. It's just someone else in the middle is scared to let that go. Money is competing, and today you have choices. Thank you, everyone here today. Please visit McGinley Innovations, Healthy Soul, and Curve Technologies, Medical 21.
And if you want to speak to myself and Doug, uh, we're here as well. Thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.